sound of the Vulcan and those four Olympus engines. All sorts of theories as to why that howl happens, I don't think anybody really knows. Um, but it does, and it absolutely, it is the trademark of the Vulcan. Big uh, Olympus Rolls-Royce engines, uh, 16,400 pounds of static thrust uh, in each of them. So, flying the Vulcan for us today, uh, in the left-hand seat, Captain is Kev Rumans. In the right-hand seat, Bill Ramsey, and the third man of the crew, the air electronics officer, sitting in the back, Barry Maysfield. So we see her coming back towards her, towards us today. Bear in mind, this is a 60-year-old aeroplane. Well, the design, uh, the, the, the model of aeroplane, 60 years old. And with her contemporaries, the Valiant and the Victor, designed to carry the British nuclear deterrent. She's as manoeuvrable as a fighter. When she first flew in the 50s, she was displaying at Farnborough, and test pilots used to do a complete roll with her. They're not allowed to do that these days, but as you can see, she can still turn a pretty manoeuvre. Bomb doors open. You see that enormous bomb bay underneath. That is the Bombay that carries or carried 21 1,000 pound bombs all the way to the Falkland Islands in the longest bombing raid in history, uh, flown by the captain, was then Flight Lieutenant Martin Withers, who was awarded the DFC for that, and they dropped 21 1,000 pound bombs on the runway at Port Stanley with the help of 11 tankers to get them there. It was an extraordinary occasion. Because Balkan had stopped being a nuclear bomber by then, she was right at the end of her service operational time, uh, and she was then a low-level tactical bomber. Bomb doors closing as she comes by for the second time. was actually the first B-2 version of the Vulcan into RAF service in Bomber Command in 1960. Uh, she's actually, this particular airplane is a mere 52 years old, just a stripling. She served on oh, the Operational Conversion Unit. Then on 101 Squadron and 44 and 50, all of which were at Waddington. She carries the colours, uh, the Lincoln coat of arms on her fin, because Lincoln is the sort of capital city of Bomber Alley at the Royal Air Force, and the Panthers head of number one group on the nose, representing all of the Vulcan squadrons in the 1970s. Also, a newer addition, she has the spirit of Great Britain painted on her nose, encapsulating all that she stands for, the great British never-say-die bulldog spirit. Thank you. 
service in 1993, nobody thought we'd ever see a Vulcan flying again. And it was only because of an amazing effort ever since by what has become the Vulcan to the Sky Trust uh, that she has been enabled to be with us now. It's cost more than £10 million and it's still costing £2 million a year to keep her going. And we've had help from the Heritage Lottery Fund and we've had to help to 770. And you will get a big thank you from us as well. So you could do that right now. Here she is coming in for that. On this 10,000 foot runway, I don't believe she will use her braking tube. you'll see Kev Rumin is holding the nose up as she goes by, so that great slab of a wing slows the aeroplane down. You see the air brake sticking out top and bottom of the wing there. He's keeping, he's actually getting the nose a little higher. And finally he lets it drop. The two nose... <laughs> Oh, 